Good day and welcome to Leadership 2. This is class number five and I'm coming to you from right near our nation's capital today. It's a brisk morning out here, but it's a beautiful day. I was hoping you could see some of the uh, the flana behind me, the trees and so forth. I want to just uh, get us started a little bit with the leader, developing the leader within part. Over the last several weeks, we've been talking about emotionally healthy spirituality and I hope that you have found this to be a very engaging and educational process as you've looked at your own emotional and spiritual well-being and have seen how those are tied together. We can't separate our emotions and our spirit and our body. We're all one person and uh, they affect each other. And having an emotionally healthy spiritual part of who we are makes all the difference in the world. Uh, I thought this was foundational when I was developing this course for leaders. Uh, many leaders go into leadership with uh, chinks in their armor, with cracks in their foundation, with problems that are unresolved, and they go in to a leadership position and they can create more damage than they can maybe bring in helping others because they don't understand uh, the foundational things in their own lives that need to be addressed. So your spiritual walk with Christ is important. <clears throat> Walking by the Spirit, as we talked about a few weeks ago, understanding the power of God's presence within your life, and then allowing that to flow through you as a leader in your decision-making process and in your personal walk of integrity, in your modeling. And so those are very important. Now we're moving on to a book that you may have already read entitled Developing the Leader Within You. But I just wanted to emphasize um, one section of this book today and then uh, throughout the, the next few weeks we'll emphasize others. Um, I do want you to get into me the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality analysis and so let me just tell you about that real quick one page overview this is double space times new roman one inch margins one one page minimally uh just an overview of the book <clears throat> tell me just about it just quickly and then one one page minimally one to two pages of each of these uh, one page minimally of uh the strengths or weaknesses you know what did peter scazzaro say that was really strong what could have been better and so forth and then one to two page minimally, one page minimally, minimal, minimally on what you personally gleaned from that book. So it's not a book report as such is that you are giving me an analysis of it and you're giving me the overview and then what you learned from the book. So please be aware of that. On page 13 in your developing the leader within you, I just wanted to stress these five levels of leadership. And I realize in your leader papers, I've asked you about this and, and, um, you have been very good to go forward and look to understand these things, but every person starts in a leadership place in what's called a position. They start with a position. It might be a title. It might be the beginning of a job or career, and you have a position, uh, but your influence does not extend beyond the name of that position. It's something that has to be earned, and it comes over time. So Maxwell has listed out here. Uh, these different levels of leadership. And I think whether you look at uh, Jim Collins, Good to Great, or other people that have analyzed leadership, they also would come up with very five similar levels. And so uh, Maxwell says the first one is position. Rights, people follow because they have to. And so you do this because I'm the leader and I said you'll do this. But hopefully, if you're leading, you want to move to another level of leadership that he calls permission. And this is where the relationships begin to form. And all of a sudden, this isn't just uh, you're following me because I've said so, but because you want to, because you know that I care about you and that I'm interested in you. And so it, it takes time, but you don't automatically... Uh, be, move into a level of permission in any ministry or leadership, you have to earn it. And uh, he says that people will follow you beyond your stated authority. This level allows work to be fun. And uh, that is fun when you begin to work together, when you don't have to fight people to get them to do things together. The third level is production, or he, he calls results. People follow because of what you have done for the organization. They begin to see some success in what you've done, and they say, wow, I'm going to get into this. And they sense that there's some success with what you're doing, and uh, problems are being fixed, and uh, there's momentum in the ministry. The next level that you could move to, and all of these take time, we're not talking about days or weeks, we're talking months and years, is people development, or he calls the reproduction phase. People follow because of what you have done for them. 
Now they realize that you have made them better. You have invested in their lives. They're not just a number to you. And you have helped them to become more than they would have become without you. This is an important facet of leadership. Leadership is not just getting people to follow you. That's, that's the simple definition of leadership, the ability to gain willing followers. But beyond that, it's to develop those people and to reproduce who you are in them. As a leader that is leading people in ministry, we want to reproduce Jesus Christ in them. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And so I wonder, could people say that about you? I'm following you because you're following Jesus. He says, this is where long-range growth occurs. Your commitment to developing leaders will ensure ongoing growth to the organization and to people. Do whatever you can to achieve this level and stay there. And it does take a long time to get there. And then the fifth level of leadership he calls uh, personhood. Now, this is kind of a larger than life, and maybe one day, after many, many years, you could reach this level. He says, people follow because of what you, what you are and what you represent. It's more than all of these other things. It's kind of a cumulative thing, and they realize that your life is bound up in something far greater than your own selfish and personal interests, but you have a godly motivation that comes from within. He says this step is reserved for leaders who have spent years growing people and organizations. If you make it, those who do are bigger than life. And you can think of some of those people over the years as well. I'm sure that, that you would say, wow, that person, they're iconic. Their, their ministry, their persona, what they do, God has used them so greatly. They might be a household name or they might just be well known throughout their community because they have invested and poured their lives into that ministry. And God uses that. So my challenge to you is this, to, to understand these five levels of leadership and think about that. Now, you, you, everyone's a leader, whether you're leading your home or leading your children or leading a ministry, everyone's a leader. And you want to be able to move through these levels, even with your children, instead of just saying, because I'm the daddy or I'm the mommy, uh, you work with this understanding and you work to where they want to work with you in accomplishing whatever it is you're trying to do and teaching them or, or helping them or instructing or disciplining them. And so think about those sorts of things this week. And um, you have that paper of uh, emotionally healthy spirituality that will be due. And then you'll have another leader report coming up that I'll be really anxious to read. Looking forward, I learned so much. If you are inclined, I'd love for you to post your last leader paper uh, on either uh, week four or week five, whatever, I guess maybe week five if you haven't posted it, and then let others read what you wrote about that leader. Okay, hope you have a great week, and uh, if you have any questions, email me. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.